All right, guys, so I'm gonna apologize ahead of time if I miss some details about what has happened in the past with the YouTube drama that I'm gonna cover because to be quite honest with you guys, uh, I don't really know all that much about this individual, okay, outside of the fact that this guy has been uh, very pro-cancel culture, okay? I've done a couple videos about the guy, but I don't watch him, right? I don't know why he's famous. I don't know what about his commentary or his podcast is so special. I've attempted to try to watch it to see if there was anything special, and quite honestly, I couldn't make it through two minutes of it. So I really don't know, okay? But I've tried my best to gather all the relevant information uh, leading up to what we're going to talk about today so that I understand the, the situation. But I want to talk about this because this is a prime example of what happens when the pendulum swings the other way, especially when it comes to cancel culture, okay? And this is something I feel like I've talked about quite a bit on my channel, right? When it comes to politics and, again, cancel culture, the pendulum always swings the other way. The sword of cancel culture is a double-edged sword. Right, you can use it against others, but it also can be used against you. And this story right here is a prime example of that happening as it involves Mr. Ethan Klein from the H3H3 podcast. If you guys are familiar with that, um, it's pretty big. Um, you know, I've talked about some of the drama involving this guy in the past, and we're gonna go over some of that drama because it has something to do with this guy ultimately becoming a victim of uh the cancel culture that he thought was a good thing that he has weaponized against other people including fellow content creators okay so with that being said um i'm gonna flash you guys back to january when this guy ethan klein attempted to cancel jordan peterson and you guys should be familiar with who jordan peterson is uh he's very famous in red pill the manosphere and right-leaning circles on the internet specifically um and he was on ethan klein's podcast at one point in the past and ethan klein back in january decided that he was going to remove jordan peterson from his podcast because uh jordan peterson is dangerous right according to ethan klein let's actually read the tweet here he says years ago i interviewed jordan peterson before i was very familiar with his politics he was an interesting guest who i enjoyed sitting with but especially now I can see he's a dangerous getaway to all right, transphobia and COVID misinformation. I remove both interviews today. Okay, so yeah, this is his version of attempting to cancel Jordan Peterson. He's saying that Jordan Peterson is a dangerous getaway to all right, transphobia and COVID misinformation. Again, this sounds very familiar. <laughs> sounds just like Democrat talking points. Okay, this line right here that he uses is the exact same line that all the leftists use to justify silencing people that they don't agree with, okay? So Jordan Peterson had responded to this, and he says, listen, what are you up to, Ethan? We had a good conversation. I enjoyed meeting you and talking with you. What have I said precisely that motivated your actions and your accusations? Deleting our discussion, an honest question at H3H3 Productions. Finally, H3H3 Productions, you might seriously consider providing me with the footage so I can post it, given that I agreed to appear on your show based on the agreement that there would, in fact, be a show. Also, I should warn you that those who engage in cancel culture generally live to regret it. I'm not going to come after you except politely in this Twitter stream, but the chickens will definitely come home to roost. You will be held to a higher and higher and so impossible to maintain ethical standard by the very mob you currently wish to please. Then you will make a mistake and they will devour you with glee. Please take this warning seriously. I liked you. All right. So Jordan Peterson here is basically giving uh, Ethan Klein a word of advice, right? He's giving Ethan Klein some wisdom as to what happens uh, when you get too close in bed with the woke mob okay because eventually the woke mob will come after you you will slip up and say something that is going to cause them to cancel you so uh how did ethan klein uh respond to this he basically remained defiant he says this is my problem jordan you asked for specific reasons i provided them instead of acknowledging my response you retract further into your bubble of flatterers and devotees talking about how you schooled me on cancel culture. You didn't school me, Jordan. Your room is as messy as your mind. And Jordan, regarding cancel culture, the only thing that has ever guided me is my own moral compass. Everything else is just noise. The mob is 
free to cancel me as it will and they have plenty of times and actually canceling as you call it sometimes is a good experience as painful as it is the times when I've received the most flack on things I've said are the times I've learned the most about myself in the world and how to be more mindful and caring of others. So this dude is basically not heeding Jordan Peterson's warning. He still doubles down that cancel culture is a good thing, okay? Uh, because of, allegedly he, he learns from being canceled. <laughs> but uh, apparently he hasn't learned enough. As um, fast forward to last week, okay, which was April 12th, he's had to come out here and apologized to his LGBTQ fans after um, he went on his podcast and said some things that they deemed to be homophobic. And I'm going to tell you guys, I listened to the things that this man said, and I can't play them <laughs> in this video, okay? That is how bad the conversation was. One that comes to mind was maybe Jordan Peterson that you described as probably being someone that would be a bottom. That's okay. the only one I can think of off the top of my head. But, like, I've, I've heard you at times maybe say, like, oh, this is someone that might be a bottom. You can't always tell like who's the top, who's the bottom. So do you, do you like, find it offensive if I say by being like, "Oh, he's a, he's probably a bottom." Is that the problem? To make absolutely, it's offensive. Um, because the gay men already, you have to you have to deal with certain assumptions about femininity and masculinity. I mean, it is term. funny You're though. I just You're I don't know. That, I think the problem is that the term "power bottom" is very funny to me. Sometimes, you know, these, these alpha men give b power bottom vibes. Now, that was one of the more tame parts of what he said on that podcast. But but trust me, during that segment, um, he said things that were a whole lot worse. Again, now, <laughs> whether or not I def define what he's saying as homophobic or, you know, should he be canceled for the things he's saying, uh, I don't believe in that stuff. But I'm not the person that is a fan of his youtube channel but there are people that do watch his youtube channel uh that were offended by the things that he said okay so much so that he had to apologize he says quote to my lgbtq plus fans i am so sorry for comments on today's show the sexualization of gay men and the grouping of tops and bottoms is a stereotype that i will be trying to unlearn apologies to the caller who i shouldn't have pressed inappropriately hope you guys know i always mean well, okay, so he apologized, but unfortunately, like this guy is learning, apologies are not enough for the woke mob. This is why you don't apologize to the woke mob because the woke mob never forgives. And in fact, um, they did not forgive Ethan Klein as he announced, I think it was yesterday or maybe day before yesterday, uh, after this event happened, that he has been canceled by his sponsors after saying what you know the, the mob is deeming to be homophobic comments um so let's actually take a look at this video of him addressing this situation this isn't too far it's too much <laughs> sorry gary stands today we have no sponsors because uh uh i am an existential threat to uh gay rights and all progress so of course our wonderful uh Fans have taken it upon themselves to write all of our sponsors and um, to have them uh, can't uh, not sponsor or not to uh, support us. So we are, um, I'm very, you know, I'll just say this. It's a, I'm very thankful to our members. It makes this show kind of uh, bulletproof to stuff like this even though it's painful and emotionally it just doesn't it's just painful that you know people would do that there it is and you know the other thing is like you you like you expect a little more of the sponsors in a way but i get it there is you know it's just transactional for them but you know i feel like i i put so much into the good our, our good partners and it's kind of crazy when they just drop you like a bag of dirt one over some bullshit, but there you go. I want over some BS, you say, right? Almost as if Jordan Peterson wasn't a prophet when it came to trying to warn you about what you're doing and getting in bed with cancel culture. Okay, again, we, we got to read this here because Jordan Peterson literally looks like a prophet. He says, you'll be held to a higher and higher and so impossible to maintain ethical standards by the very mob you currently wish to please. Then you will make a mistake and they will devour you with glee. Please take this warning seriously. I like you. Again, it's almost as if this guy was told that this would happen if you uh, get too far in bed with the, the mob. 
okay? If you participate in this cancel culture and you promote it, it's almost like it will come back to haunt you. And it certainly did, okay? I mean, this is the same guy that said that Jordan Peterson was a dangerous getaway to alt-right transphobia and COVID misinformation. So I guess Ethan Klein is a getaway to um, <laughs> uh, homophobia, right? Uh, apparently, that, that's kind of what it seems like, okay? And also not to mention, this is the same guy that also tried to get another content creator uh, canceled. So he actually succeeded at it. Uh, his name was Keemstar. Again, I'm not all that familiar with these guys because I don't really watch this part of YouTube, okay? Uh, but apparently, uh, Keemstar had a, a sponsorship with a company called G Fuel, I believe. And Ethan Klein went out of his way to try to get that company to stop sponsoring Keemstar, and, and they actually did. Okay, so he tried to do the same thing that is happening to him right now to another man, a fellow content creator. And lo and behold, this is happening to him, except that it's happening to him because his own fans have tried to cancel him. Okay, his own fans, not some other content creator, right? Not some, you know, person that's hating on him. No, no, his own fans was like, no, 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 we're going to try to cancel you. He's being struck by the same sword that he's used to strike other people with, the double-edged sword of cancel culture. He is a victim of the cancel culture that he promotes. Again, guys, this is a prime example of why I don't participate in this, okay? Even if I don't like what somebody says, especially when it comes to individuals, if I don't like what you say, right, I'm never going to come out here and say that you shouldn't be able to earn a living or try to destroy your livelihood or advocate for censorship or anything like that. The reason why is because I understand that when that happens to somebody else, it just makes it much more likely that it will happen to me, right? It will happen to me, okay? And that's why I don't do it. You don't want to get the ball rolling on this stuff because once the ball starts rolling, it rolls, right? It is very, very, very hard to stop. And that is what cancel culture is, okay? That's what it is. So with that being said, I mean, hey, you hate to see it. I really do hate to see it. But at the same time, it, it couldn't have happened to a more deserving person. I'm pretty sure this guy has millions of fans. He'll still be fine financially. But I just got a gut feeling that this guy is really going to dig himself in a hole that he's not going to be able to get out of one day. And, and maybe because of the things that he's prone to say and the cancel culture that he's chosen to promote. Eventually, I think something's going to happen. This is my gut feeling. I'm not saying I hope it happens. I'm just saying I got a feeling something's going to happen uh, that he's not necessarily going to be able to recover from easily, okay? That he's really, really, really going to regret. And it's going to be a result of the same things that he has openly advocated for and he tried to do to other people. Again, it's already happening. So with that being said, uh, let me know what you guys think about this. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.